Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, and we're going to drink a beer. It's going to be my second beer from a, this very new brewery here in Ontario uh, that I am super excited about. I really like that first beer. Uh, the other five beers I have from them all intrigue me. So let's, uh, let's do this one here. Uh, this is from Half Hours on Earth in Seaforth, Ontario. This is Totally, which is a tart farmhouse ale with raspberries and hibiscus at 6% alcohol by volume. Bang! Half Hours on Earth. I'm so excited to try this. I'm so excited. Just looking into the bottle, I'm excited. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move this because my little uh, tray there is made with a book that I still have to read. My buddy Jordan and my buddy Robin's book. I wonder if this brewery is actually in there. I don't think so. I think they opened up after. Oh my god. Okay. So first and foremost, this Teku glass, I have to thank Guy from Beer Guy Reviews for. It's from Broken Stick in Ottawa. And uh, I never thought Broken Stick would make Teku glasses. So, oh my god. A beer with hibiscus and raspberries that is actually red with a pink head. I'm already loving this brewery. I mean, that just makes me excited to see. Uh, beautiful, beautiful reddish color. Lots of carbonation moving in there. Beautiful pinkish head. Just very slightly pink. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it does have that hue. Snap, crackle, pop. Oh, yeah, there's a snap, crackle, pop, babies. Uh, let's give this a sniff, shall we? That, uh, just out of the glass, that smells fucking divine. Excuse my language, but yeah, it smells divine out of the glass. Um, yeah, that is great. I, I love seeing new breweries that don't cut corners, that go out and actually do things properly. And that impresses me. Raspberries, that's all I smell out of the glass. I'm going to give the bottle a sniff in a second, but raspberries is all I smell. Both the, uh... Both the like sour, over-ripened mush in the bottom of your pint container raspberries and fresh, beautifully sweet raspberries. I'm getting both on the nose. And it just smells divine. Now out of the bottle. Okay, out of the bottle, it's, uh, it's the same type of thing. It is the very divine raspberry scent, but with a little bit of uh, tartness as well, and a little bit of, of almost earthiness. I know it says hibiscus, but I'm not picking up the flower scent. That's okay, though, because I'm not a big fan of hibiscus um, as, a, as an aromatic. Let's try the beer. Cheers. I'm excited. That sucks. That fucking sucks. It fucking sucks that this beer is not on a fucking IV in my fucking veins at all times. Well, I wouldn't be able to taste it then. On a, on a constant drip into my mouth. That's what I need. I need this on constant drip into my mouth. This is fucking delightful. Oh my god, how do you keep this beer on stock? Like, that is great. Raspberries. Pure unadulterated raspberries, sweet raspberries, sour raspberries. That yeah, tastes like I'm crunching a raspberry right now, like I have a whole bunch of them and I'm eating. Well, no, like you made a raspberry smoothie and you're, you drank it and then you get all those black seeds stuck in your teeth and you just crunch them because you're an idiot. Yeah, it, I, I taste the beautiful sweetness of the raspberry. I taste the beautiful sourness of the raspberry. I taste that slightly bitterness that bitter tannin of the of the seeds. The raspberry sweetness and the raspberry sourness is, is cut by a touch of floral and a big tartness on the back end. Like um 
it, it's weird the way this goes because it touches your lip, it touches your tongue, and it actually starts out sour. It starts out sour, goes sweet, goes to a slight floral and seedy like bitterness, and then goes right back to sour. And sour just washes your palate and makes you want more. This beer is Moorish. It's quaffable. It's chuggable. But you don't want to chug it because you want to savor it. Like I'm, I'm torn because I do want to chug it. And I don't want to chug it because I love this beer. It's just the right amount of fruit, just the right amount of of uh, bitterness, just the right amount of tartness. It's just super balanced. It's super fresh tasting. It's it's just beautiful. You know what? Half hours on Earth, totally, it's totally worth a 9.75 out of 10. The only reason it's getting a .25 taken off is the more I drink it, the more that uh, that tart builds on the back of the tongue. It, again, it isn't overwhelming, it just it, it hits the back of the tongue a little harder each time you sip it, but it fades right away. It's, you take it, you drink it, you get all the taste, and then you get a growing sour on the back, but then it drops off right away. And then you drink it, and the sour hits a little harder on the back end, but then it drops right away, and it just keeps going up a little higher, and then dropping off right away. If it stayed, it would probably lose a little bit more, but that that's the only drawback I have on this beer, other than I also can't get it. So there's the only two drawbacks on this beer. <coughs> Excuse me. But... 9.75 out of 10, uh, there's not many beers that have hit that mark even this year. I think the only other two are like uh, Boris from Strange Fellows and uh, Nect Nectar Nectoris from uh, Four Winds. Uh, so it's, it's in good company. This is a solid beer. This is a Canadian championship beer, if you ask me. This should be in like the fruit categories. Uh, I hope it goes into the fruit category at the Ontario Brewing Awards this year. Because it's very much worth an award. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. I know I'm supposed to chug, but I kind of want to get a picture with the glass. Okay, picture's taken. Chug. Bye. Holy fuck, that's good.